we are for the next in the series of interviews celebrating 10 years of synesthesia. Today's theme is gamification and I'm joined today by Natasha Scott, CEO and Creative Director for MyTail. Natasha, hi, how are you today? Hi, excellent. Uh, and hello from sunny Finland for change. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's so great to have you with us today. Thank you for being able to join us. And thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be part of this. Wonderful. Um, Natasha, I'm going to get straight into it because you have got such an interesting background. Um, I really enjoyed reading your, your biographies on various sites about the, the different things that you've done. Um, but I would, like, I would like you to describe it to us in your words. Um, share with us a little bit about what brought you to this world of gaming, please. Uh, yeah, uh, well, it's a very broad, actually, uh, well, very, very wide story. So I'm just going to try to be as short as possible there. Well, first of all, I, I never thought that I would be actually ending up in the games industry per se. I, I was just a gamer, like a hardcore nerd <laughs> my whole life. Um, and games were, and, and plus besides like games as, as an experience that I was as a kid always fascinated with, uh, but that's due to my parents. I mean, my parents were... Uh, even that none of them were in games or tech actually development or anything like that, but they were very uh, also geeky in that sense that we had the consoles and computers and everything from very early stage, as soon as possible, basically, people would have. So I was privileged in that way that I grew up by having pretty much everything and anything I wanted from, well, computers and, and uh, games and consoles, even the very old handheld uh, consoles. So um, so I, I grew up with, with games as a part of normal, <laughs> normal life. And also this was one of these things that really was escape from reality when it comes to um, being able to do so many other things that you would like to do. For example, you know, being a Tomb Raider, <laughs> if nothing else as a, you know, as, as a, a uh, young girl uh, who was not really understood with the games and being a gamer, because as, as someone who grew up also in Belgrade, Serbia, at that time, um, it was not necessarily normal that girls would be playing games. Uh, but my parents were always encouraging and supporting both me and my sister, actually. And I mean, I, I think I, um, well, I do remember reading that you've, you had a, a background in, in classical art, didn't you? I'm, you studied Roman painting, I think. Oh, yes. So my, my actual, like my university education, I finished um, uh, in, in University of Arts in Belgrade, uh, traditional painting uh, techniques, especially my master's was in classical Roman painting techniques, such as fresco mosaics graffito and all other beautiful stuff which i'm sure you know what i'm talking about but to be honest here in in nordics barely anyone understands when i speak about these things um still this is something that um because i i was always besides being an artist i i always i mean this sort of traditional artist i also was very much into digital stuff um and, and especially graphic design and so on so i was combining either way both traditional and kind of like uh let's say contemporary approaches as well. Um, but what one thing that really has always been um, a big part of my, I mean, passion or, or within my heart is uh, visual storytelling. So this is something that especially now through games uh, as, as interactive medium, gives so much additional kind of opportunity for storytelling. And so this is where I, I'm really having most of the uh, fun and also expertise actually uh to to um to contribute in the in the game development with this sort of like how to create the overall um uh, storytelling experience sure that's very cool i'm getting a sense of game development as an art form um more yeah. than a, a technology <laughs> form yeah wonderful and you you've said then about storytelling so um just thinking there about your inspirations for for games and game development how much of real life like real life <laughs> um goes into the games that you develop i mean just like in any art form pretty much all of it i mean when you think about art art any any art form it's connected to its time 
it's connected to um, connecting to another part of the or other parts of time or other people or like it's all about again experiences so and games they're not just experiences that where you are having like in in any other medium books or movies or so where you are having this sort of monologue of the creator towards the audience but here we have a dialogue between the creator and the actual user meaning player so it it builds much bigger in my opinion this sort of as a medium i mean games as a medium bu builds much uh, stronger emotional bond uh, with your let's say viewers or users or however you want to call it <laughs> as an art form so co context plays plays an important part um Absolutely. No, yeah and what you just made me think of then actually i was just thinking about how with other art um you know like um paintings and literature actually i was specifically thinking um with paintings and with poetry there's mm -hmm. nothing the artist can do about the 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 user you know the whoever's who, whoever's receiving the art um the well, about the user's interpretation okay if i see that that's what i see if i understand that from the poem that's what i understand um that's taken to a whole other level in game development isn't it because your users your uh, you know they they interact with your art form they change your art form they they change the story <laughs> I have so much to say on this. Okay, yeah. well, first of all, as an art art creator, whatever whatever type of art form we are talking about here, but let's let's talk about visual just for the sake of simplicity. Uh, because with with games, there is additional part of audio visual because music and sound makes a huge impact together with the visual, and it's a whole exp it it attacks quite many like all the senses basically. But we can we will talk about it slightly later. Just the thing here, like when you think about the First of all, uh, visual um, and visual narrative, especially from the painting perspective, to simplify. Um, it's not true that it's up to only your uh, particular, how, how, you how you perceive it. Um, first of all, we as, as humans, um, I mean, our brains work in that way that first of all, image stays intact in our, like, um, in our memory much longer than any other medium any <laughs> so so uh, this is one thing that first of all image impacts us a lot secondly the artist always with all the elements of the traditional um art creation like when you are planning the from the composition um uh color scheme um uh, atmosphere um uh, all the parts i mean from the you know like harmony this <laughs> this, this harmony and everything else it's like um you are guiding like when you think about the, the allegories, like a wall art pieces. Uh, you have the whole stories that are done, like so adaptation from the text to image in a way that you are guiding also viewer where to focus on where, how, and how story actually progresses all in that one image. Um, and this is where, again, iconography, semiotics, and all other parts of kind of actual art theory comes in hand to actually get even deeper. But as a viewer, there are much more kind of layers to it. First of all, it can be impact literally of your own personal interests and tastes. Uh, so kind of like besides objective art theory, what actually something means and wants to be kind of understood, but it's more like, it's also the mood. Um, how do you feel about uh, this particular, the, how, how your life situation is in order that how you receive information, any information. And this is also how art as well can impact us in so many different ways, depending on so many moving pieces around us all the time. It, it is also basically, especially for those who play games a lot, I can tell you from my personal experience, I, it's very hard for me to say, I don't have one favorite game. I don't even have 10 favorite games. I have dozens and dozens of favorite games because it really depends on the mood and the mindset and everything else where I'm at when I play what. There are days that I just want to shoot the hell out of stuff. There are days that I want to do uh, uh, point and click and kind of like, uh, you know, like, or, or doing detective stuff or doing puzzles, like literally simple puzzles. Unlike in the art piece that you are just, let's say, having that message from the artist to the, to the receiver. Uh, as an active member, first of all, it's, it's not that active in the sense that 
there is illusion of a choice that you have in a game because we developers we very carefully design everything and we know what's going to happen all like everything is predetermined anyway but player doesn't know that player is going through that discovery and feeling of this sort of empowerment and so on so there is um so so, so it's it's illusion that there is a choice <laughs>